Hello guys. My name is Jack and I live in Scotland today. I'll share with you the strangest and worst incident of my life. If you like my video or you can learn something from it, then thumb up on my video. Also subscribe to the channel. I was the only son of my parents. We lived a very peaceful and prosperous life. My parents loved me very much and I saw from my childhood that my father loved my mother very much. My parents had a love marriage and were living an ideal life. My father had a job in a very good company and was earning well. I have seen them love each other and care for each other since childhood. I never saw any quarrel between them. Then once my father went to another city for work and returned home. After six months, I was ten years old at that time when he came back from work. After six months, everything had changed. My parents started to disagree on small things and they started fighting. It was strange, I couldn't accept all of them because they loved each other so much. So what happened in six months? That they were so far from each other. I was very young at that time, so I couldn't understand much of their words. But my mother always quarreled with him that my father did not give time to my mother and my mother suspected that he might be with another woman and cheating them. They escalated to such an extent that it reached the point of divorce. Their fight made a lot of difference on me. I will be depressed all the time. And one day my parents got divorced, my father really liked someone else. And after a month of divorce, he married her, the woman who my father liked was working in his company. They were friends even before my parents got married. But after marriage, when he went to work for six months, that woman also came to work with him. When did their friendship turn into love? Even my father did not know that even that love grew so much that they had become intimate with each other. When my mother came to know about this incident, they said they may know about this. But this woman and my father and her pictures to my mother. When she saw all this, my mother was heartbroken and decided to divorce my father. My father also apologized to my mother, but my mother was so heartbroken that she did not want to live with my father when I was a little older and started to understand things I found out how my father cheated on my mother. So I hated my father for a while, but my mother did not allow me to hate him, but always told me to love him and sent me to meet him every month so that I wouldn't get away from him and start hating him. And when I met my father, he would love me so much that his love never made me hate him. And my stepmother never mistreated me that I hated her. Of course, my parents' divorce had a profound effect on me and I was also depressed. But despite all this life was going well. But when I finished my school, my mother also liked someone and married him after her marriage. My mother did not love me as much as she used to nor she was able to give me the time she used to. She was mostly with her husband. Often I used to go to my father to meet him, but I stayed with my mother. When I used to visit my father, he had a little daughter with whom I used to play. She was very sweet. And the time I spent with her at my father's house was very beautiful. After all that, when I completed my college, I realized that both of them are happy in their life and they don't need me. After completing my college, I started working in a good company and left my mother's house because my stepfather did not treat me well and I did not like him very much. One of the reasons for leaving home was my father's bad attitude. But on the other hand, I wanted to be alone now and started living in an apartment. I decided to live alone, but I used to visit them once a month at my mother's house. And once at my father's house, I had a crush on a girl from my college days. Her name was Julie. We both loved each other very much. Julie belonged to a very good family and was very beautiful. She is also my good friend and we understand each other. At first, her parents did not like a relationship with us, but she took a stand in front of her parents for me. But later they agreed because Julie came from a good and wealthy family. I wanted to give Julie all the joys and comforts of life that I worked so hard for her. 
I did not decide to marry Julie until I got a separate department and a good job so I could live a good life with Julie. Julie also respected my every decision and supported me in every step and started working with me. She believed that both boys and girls should work hard to live a good life. After a lot of hard work, I achieved every facility of life. Now I was living in a separate department and I had a very good job. And Julie was also working in a very good company. We decided to marry each other. After five years of relationship. After two months, I was going to get a promotion and after getting promotion, we decided to get married. I got a project from the company to complete it. I had to go to a town near the city where my father lived with his wife and one of his daughters. And promotion was very important for me to have a good life at Julie. So I decided to leave my apartment and move to the town near the city and live in my father's house. I was given a month by the company to complete the project. So I had to stay at my father's house for a month when I told my father that I want to come and stay at your house. He was very ecstatic to hear it. And he happily invited me to his house. When I reached my father's house. After a night's journey, my father and my stepmother welcomed me. This time, I went to my father's house. After many years, when I used to go to my father's house, he also had a little daughter who was ten years younger than me. I used to play with her a lot and she was a good friend of mine. But when this time I went and she was not at home, I asked my father about his daughter. My father replied that she had gone on a 10-day trip with her friends. My stepmother said that she will come after 10 days, then you should meet her. I've wanted to meet her as I spent many good days of my childhood with her and considered her one of my best friends. Her name is Sophia. I started working on my project. I was working very hard and dedicated and my father and his wife also took care of me and 10 days will end soon. One day I came home after finishing my work from office. As usual, I knocked on the door and a very beautiful girl opened the door. I asked her, who are you? And what are you doing here? She replied that this is my house. Who are you and why have you come here? I thought for a moment after hearing her and then burst into laughter because she was my stepsister, Sophia. Then I told her I was her elder brother, Jack, and she gave me a big hug. She missed me so much and she welcomed me home. She had changed so much that I did not recognize her. She was so cute as a child, but now she's hot as well as cute. When I told her that I'm here for work and will stay here for a month. She was very happy to hear. We sat the whole night and talked a lot and many about our childhood. Her words were so beautiful that I did not realize the time I kept listening to her for hours and did not get bored at all. I was very tired when I came home, but her words removed all my tiredness. As sweet as her words were. She looked more beautiful while talking that for a long time. I forgot my love Julie these days. Julie and I were not able to spend much time with each other due to work pressure and our contact was reduced to a certain extent. Earlier, Julie also used to call me every day. We used to talk for hours, but gradually due to work, both talked less to each other. The next morning when I woke up, I saw Julie laying breakfast on the table for me and no one was in the house. I asked Sophia where my father and your mother had gone. She replied, they have gone to meet a friend at their house. When I asked if they would be back by evening, Sophia replied, no, they would stay the night. Then I asked her why they had gone to see his friend. And she told me that his friend was very ill. So they went to visit her. Then we both sat and had breakfast together. And again, we talked a lot that I used to look at Sophia without wanting to and my eyes would stop on her. I was attracted towards her without wanting to in at the time and Sophia being with me and talking to me. I wouldn't miss Julie at all as if Julie was no longer in my life. There was a stranger attraction in Sophia that drew me towards her just as I enjoyed spending time with Sophia. Sophia also enjoyed spending time with me.
I did not have any work in the office that day. So I did not go to the office and spent the whole day with Sophia. We spent the whole day very well. We talked and played a lot with each other. But when the night came, a very strange thing happened, we both cooked dinner together. And after eating Sophia put on a very beautiful romantic movie on TV. Everything was going well that I did not know when I was watching the movie and I got closer to Sophia and like me, Sophia was also coming closer to me. I couldn't stop my feelings and I kissed her. Both of us were so immersed in emotions that we did not realize the time and we did not know what we were doing. Then the doorbell rang. Sophia jerked me back and went to open the door. My father and my stepmother were at the door. Then Sophia asked them that they were going to stay for the night. Then why did they come so early? Her mother replied that I was missing my daughter so much that we came back. Maybe they came back because they did not want to stay there. However, I got up from the sofa and went to my room after meeting them. I couldn't sleep the whole night and kept thinking, what have I done? What Sophia will think of me after all this and how Julie will react. If she finds out about my feelings, she hates me. I loved Julie so much and could not betray her. I called Julie at that time of night thinking that if I talk to Julie for a while, I will feel calm and my emotions will also come under control. But when I called Julie, she did not pick up my phone. I called her again. She picked up my phone and only answered that I'm sleepy and I felt bad to hear this. Julie never talked to me like this before. Every time when I called her, she used to stop everything and talk to me. But this time, her behavior was very different. Maybe she wanted to sleep because of the exhaustion of work. But I needed Julie the most at that time and she had no time for me. The next day when I woke up, I saw Sophia wasn't at home. I had my breakfast and went to my office. As usual. I was unable to do any work the whole day and kept thinking about it. I came home and knocked on the door. Sophia opened the door. I stopped seeing her and lowered my eyes. I can never meet her again. I did not talk to Sophia and went straight to my room, but I felt like Sophia wanted to talk to me after a while. There was a knock on the door of my room. When I opened the door, Sophia was standing in front of it. I saw her in front of my door for a while and wondered why she had come. What would she talk to me? Would she fight with me? That I am her sister. And what does she think of me? Sophia asked me that if she can come in? I thought about it, moved away from the door and she came in a strange act that she did as soon as she came in. She closed the door. My heart sank for a while. Then she sat on my bed and called me and said, Come and sit, I have to talk to you. I went near her and stood for a while. She again told me, Come sit here. I want to talk to you. I went and sat next to her. My eyes were downcast and I did not have the courage to make eye contact with her. Sophia told me that whatever happened between us that day was just an accident. We shouldn't think too much about it and forget that night. I want all the grudges between us to end and our relationship to be as it was before hearing this from Sophia. My heart felt a little relieved after saying this, she left my room. I kept thinking about this whole night. I was relieved, but I controlled myself and tried to stay away from her. I started spending most of the time in my office, came home late at night and went straight to my room and slept. And this became my daily routine. One night I came home. As usual, I saw no one in the house. I passed by Sophia's room. I heard crying from the room. I knocked on the door. Sophia called, come inside. I went inside. I asked her where my father and your mother had gone. He told that they have gone to his friend's home. He had visited a few days ago, he had died and they would stay there tonight. I asked her why she was crying and she said that today is her birthday and today is the day her boyfriend broke up with her, she liked a boy and he refused to marry her, refused. She hugged me and started crying. I explained to her and said today is your birthday. 
So we will celebrate your birthday in a good way. You'll forget the sorrow. I arranged the cake. Sophia told me that she wants to drink alcohol. So I arranged the wine too. We cut the cake. And after that both of them had a good talk again, I wanted to ease her grief so that she wouldn't think too much about the boy. She was very sad and I tried my best to make her feel better. She completely forgot her grief. For some time, we drank a lot of wine and we did not realize how much we did. We were both sitting in Sophia's room. I was drunk and listening to Sophia's conversation. My eyes were not taking off from her and I was again attracted to her charms. The next day I woke up and saw that I and Sophia were laying on the same bed and my eyes were filled with tears. It felt as if the ground had slipped from under my feet. Meanwhile, Sophia also woke up when she found me in her bed and saw us both. She started crying. I put on my clothes and took out of her room. I went to my room and packed all the things. And regardless of whether my project was completed or I returned to my apartment in my city, I reached my apartment and called Sophia and told her that I was unconscious, drunk, whatever happened. I don't remember anything. Please forget it. And next month, I'm marrying my love Julie. I love her very much. I don't want anyone to know that what happened between us. Don't tell my dad and your mom and Julie anything about it. Sophia just heard this and asked me one question. Don't you remember anything that happened that night? I said yes, I don't. Then she assured me that she won't tell anyone about it and hung up the phone. My heart got some relief. The next day I went to Julie to meet her and decided that we will get married very soon. We decided to get married after one month and marriage preparations were going on. It was in all of them. Sophia called me and told me that she's pregnant. My ears were bursting to hear it. I told her to meet her right away. I left my apartment at night and I met Sophia in a nearby restaurant. I told Sophia to get an abortion because next month I am getting married to Julie. And if she finds out about this, she will leave me. I love her so much. I cannot bear it. She will be heartbroken if she leaves. Sophia said that she will not have an abortion and refused it. There were no signs of worry on her face and she was very confident while talking. I told her it all happened by accident. I did not want it to happen. Sophia told me that I'll get an abortion in one condition. If I give her $10 million, this amount was too much for me. But I accepted her condition. I raised the money within a week and gave it to her. She promised me that she would do as I told her. But Sophia's grade increased and she again asked me for $10 million and threatened me that if I don't give her the money, she would tell Julie everything. I was so worried because I was getting married to Julie. Next week, I got fed up with all this and decided to tell Julie everything the truth. I called Julie and asked to meet her. Julie came to my apartment and I told her everything about that night. Julie woke up. She slapped me hard on the face and left. Then two days later, Julie called me and said, Don't you remember what happened between you and her that night? When you were drunk? I told her yes, I don't remember anything about it. I only remember I kissed Sophia. And after that, we both laid on the bed. Julie told me that you go to Sophia and tell her I want to accept our child. I was surprised to hear this, but I did what Julie told me. I asked to meet Sophia and at the appointed place at the appointed time, Sophia came to meet me when I told her that I have told Julie all the truth and she has left me. Now, I'm not afraid we'll raise our child together. It had to hear that Sophia's color flew away and she sat at my feet and started crying. She told me that nothing happened between us that night. And I lied about all this because you should give me money so that I can give it to my boyfriend. And we can start a good business. He did not have money. I loved him so much so I wanted to give it all to him and let him do good business and then we can live well. Sophia apologized to me and I immediately forgave her because Julie also forgave me for my mistake. And then I and Julie got married on the same stage that was fixed earlier.
Julie was a sensible girl. If she wasn't here for me, I might not have been able to get out of this trouble. Even today. She trusted me and my love happened.